Hi there, I'm Megs from James and Megs, and welcome to this week's vlog. So this week is Birth Trauma Awareness Week, and I thought I would take this as an opportunity to talk about my own experiences with birth trauma. So today I'm gonna to talk about what happened with me, how it affected me, and what I've learned from my experiences. So why am I talking about birth trauma? Well, for me, this is something that is really ignored in society. I feel like we as women often see idealized versions of how birth should be. And from my experience, I very rapidly learned that for pregnancy and childbirth, that's not necessarily the case. And the more we talk about it as a society, the more it can be accepted. And women who go through this really need the, this kind of support. So just as a slight trigger warning, I'm gonna be talking about things such as emergency C-sections and general anesthesia today. If that is something that you're not so uh, keen on hearing about, then please do feel free to skip this video. I honestly won't be offended if that is the case. I'm also gonna put in the description down below some links to supportive charities that can help you if you are going through a birth trauma yourself or you know someone who is going through it and you want to support them. So for me, it more or less started in the third trimester of my pregnancy. To cut a six week long story short, they thought my daughter was a small baby and then they discovered she was breech and then they tried to manually turn her around. That didn't work and they scheduled me in for an elective C-section the week before she was due. This outcome was really, at the time, the worst thing that could have happened in my head. So I spent about two weeks trying to mentally prepare myself for the C-section happening. About three days before I was due to have my C-section, I was checking my bag again, my hospital bag. I'd literally just finished ticking off everything that was on the checklist. And I thought to myself, I really need the loo. So I went towards the loo and all of a sudden my waters broke. What was quite funny about that was when I told James about it, his first reaction was, are you sure you haven't peed yourself? Anyone who's been in that situation where their waters have broken know the difference between that and peeing themselves, I can tell you that much. So because my waters are broken, I wasn't sure what to do, so I called the hospital. They brought me in to check that if labour was progressing. I went to hospital, they let me in, they let my husband in because they confirmed that yes, I was in labour and I was having contractions. So because that was the case, they scheduled me in for a C-section that day. Because I had eaten at 10 o'clock in the morning, they wanted to wait six hours for that to go down. So they booked me in for four o'clock that afternoon. I went into hospital at one o'clock. They did my first internal exam at two and I was only about two centimeters dilated, they said, one to two centimeters. During the next two hours, I felt my contractions just getting stronger and stronger. I was needing gas and air. It was really unpleasant, but I kept going on with it because I just assumed that's what you do. This is my first baby. I'm guessing this is how things go. And then it got to a point where I was then about to go in for my C-section. It felt really bad. I felt like I had this sudden urge to push and I really made that clear to the midwife and they told me it was pretty much a normal thing. So in my head, uh, I thought to myself, maybe I'm just making a big deal out of this. So they wheeled me down from my room to the theater. They wanted me to sit on the edge of the bed so they could put a spinal anesthetic in. I was in so much pain and I felt so much pressure that I could not sit down. So they laid me down on the table just to check things over. At this point, James had put on some music because I'd made a C-section playlist. And around the same time, I was put into some stirrups to be examined again. This was my second exam. So then the doctor, one of the doctors said to James to stop the music. Literally, almost as soon as he'd started it, she said, stop the music. He stopped it. And then another doctor said to me, Megan, you're fully dilated. And I thought to myself, what? And I think I said that out loud as well. You know, what is, what are you talking about? I'd only been one to two, like two hours ago, and now I'm fully dilated. Things have gone a bit chaotic at that point. They said to me, do you want to try pushing or do you want to have a C-section? I really didn't know what to do. I was terrified. I'd been told that a C-section would always be the safer option, but at the same time, I was really scared of having one. I wasn't quite sure. And then the doctors were like, we don't have time. You have to make a decision now. So I just 
very quickly said c-section they kept saying to me as well don't push don't push if you've been in that position where you're ready to push being told that not to is the most difficult thing in the world, I can tell you. But I just physically couldn't. I was involuntarily pushing, apparently. They got me on my side to try and do a spinal anaesthetic. It missed both times that they tried it. So apparently they got it in the actual bone bits of the spine rather than the uh, vertebrae bit of the spine. Because it was a holiday weekend as well, they couldn't actually get any consultants for the labour ward to come in on an emergency to help. And then all of a sudden I just felt myself being dragged back onto my back. And someone said to me, Megan, we're gonna have to put you to sleep, is that okay? And I said, yes. Honestly, because I just wanted the, everything to stop. I was in so much pain and confusion. I just wanted the whole situation to stop. I wanted to escape. I remember I kept saying to James that if I didn't make it out of this, he had to look after the baby for me because I kind of thought in that moment I might die. And I also then remember just having the mask put over my face and within a few seconds, my eyes were closed. The next thing I know, I'm coming out, I'm being wheeled out of a theater. I can see lights, uh, everyone seems happier. And I suddenly look down and there is a small pink thing lying next to me. And everyone's telling me, this is your baby, this is your daughter. I just, I think maybe it was the drugs, maybe I'd just woken up from the operation, but I just couldn't put two and two together at that point. I just couldn't quite contemplate, this is my baby, it's all over. So that is my basic birth story. What effect did it have on me is the next thing I wanna talk about. So initially when all of this was over, I didn't really feel anything. I didn't really process anything in those first couple of days. And you know, if anything, I thought to myself, there's no point getting upset about it, it's it's happened, what's the big deal, really? And then, sort of in the couple of days after that, in that first week, every time I saw a midwife and they asked me how her birth was, I would just start crying and bursting into tears because I felt like, I felt like I'd stolen the chance away to experience that birth myself and I'd stolen the chance from James to experience him seeing his first child being born. And then I also got a couple of really weird side effects in those first couple of months. First of all, whenever I tried to nap, I really struggled with it. I would try not to because every time I napped and woke up, I would really struggle to breathe. I also really didn't like listening to music. Whenever I listened to music, even if it wasn't on my C-section playlist, it would make me burst into tears. And then I got to a stage I sort of really fixated on it and I wanted answers. I asked for my hospital notes and got a big sort of document about everything that had happened in hospital. I sort of read the notes to get a better understanding of what happened. It turned out hearing that she cried immediately when she was uh, born, I just burst into tears because you know, I wasn't there for it. And James wasn't there for it either. I felt awful and I felt guilty as a mother. I felt like I was such a bad parent in that moment. So then a few months after that, sort of getting into winter time, I started having problems with sleeping. I would start feeling physical sensations of pushing. And when I would lie in bed at night, it would then give me flashbacks of the actual situation I'd been in. And it was really unsettling with that physical sensation of pushing as well. And it really made me struggle to sleep at night. I also started getting reactions to seeing things on TV associated with hospitals and births. So I couldn't watch One Born Every Minute anymore. It made me really upset. And even more weirdly so, I would watch TV and if there was like a hospital drama or comedy on and they showed someone having a mask put over their face to go to sleep for anesthesia, it would freak me out. I would be struggling to breathe, really. It would really upset me. I ended up in an argument with James about sleeping patterns and juggling childcare. And he mentioned to me how it, is frustrating that we go to bed too late or we wake up too late. And it was at that point I just really lost it and I just broke down and said, you know, this is why I'm having this problem. I need you to understand this is why I go to bed so much later. And he kind of encouraged me to talk about it with my doctor. And when I spoke to my doctor about it, this is when she told me that I probably have PTSD. And that kind of took me aback a little bit, but it turns out this is something that can occur in any situation that causes significant trauma to the point where you have flashbacks. And birth trauma is actually quite a common 
example of where you can develop post-traumatic stress disorder. So now you've got an idea of how it made me feel, I thought I would talk about the things I've actually learned from this process, and these are actually quite positive things that I want to try and talk about to help support others. So the first thing I learned is that birth trauma is a real thing and there is support out there for it. As I mentioned before, I think we're exposed in the media to a lot of examples of where births go right or there is a glamorized version of birth out there. Nobody really talks about birth trauma as a possibility. And I didn't know that until I actually experienced it, which then caused a huge shock to the system for me. Fortunately though, there are a lot of support forums out there. So for me, I looked up the Birth Trauma Association. That was my first port of call. And then I found online support groups through social media. And I've learned from that just how many people are actually affected by this, how it can affect people in many different ways, many different cases, many different causes of birth trauma, and it really is a big eye-opener. Now this leads me on to my second thing that I've learned. Everyone has trauma and you can't compare your trauma to someone else's. Yes, someone can experience birth trauma for different reasons, for very horrific reasons as well. That doesn't mean what you go through is still not trauma. If you have felt that you have experienced these flashbacks, these negative memories, you are still in a traumatic situation and you cannot compare what you've been through to what someone else has been through. Also, no one has the right to say to you, oh, it could have been worse, or oh, at least the baby's healthy, or oh, at least you survived. That is so unhelpful. It kind of makes me feel like I am wrong for even talking about or feeling a birth trauma. It just really isn't helpful. So, you know, if you're trying to support someone going through it, just keep that in mind. Something else you might want to keep in mind, which is something else that I've learned, is that grief has no time limit in this instance. And you know, some days are better than others. They're, I'm currently in a good position with my PTSD. I'm not feeling the flashback so much right now. It doesn't mean in the future I'm not going to feel that. From support forums, I've seen examples of uh, many others who have experienced birth trauma and actually feel it, for example, on their kid's birthday. And that is something that does make me nervous for the future. I did feel worse on Eloise's birthday this year. And you know, this could happen to me in her subsequent birthdays. The final thing I've learned is that if you feel like you're going through a trauma associated with your child's birth, you need to speak out about it. For me, I went through all of these PTSD symptoms without talking to anyone about it because I felt that I was doing a lot of comparing with other parents that I'd uh, read about online with their births. My child's birth wasn't, clearly was far less traumatic, so I'm very much being overdramatic and I shouldn't talk to anyone about this. They'll just think I'm a drama queen. And really that was the worst type of thinking to have because it kept everything buried inside and buried under a surface. And when something was wrong, I didn't speak up about it. And it, for me, it then got to a boiling point where it took an argument with James to then make me say out loud, I am having this problem and I think I need some help. And it was only then, nearly a year after she was born, that I was diagnosed with PTSD. But if I'd reached that help a bit sooner, I might have been able to access more support that I think could have helped me. So talking about it with someone like a GP or a loved one as soon as you can is something I would really recommend. So thank you so much for watching this week's vlog. I hope you've taken away something from this if you are experiencing birth trauma or you know someone who has experienced it themselves. This year's theme is connections with others and I'm gonna spend this time now connecting with my daughter and spending lots of quality time with her because even through this mess, even through this rubbish, I do love her so much. But if you like what you've seen today, please give this video a like. If you have any comments or thoughts, do leave a comment down below. And you know, we're a family channel. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.